Hello buddies, this is Game Night. Welcome to Expeditions Viking. Now this game is by the company called Logic Artists. They were formed in 2011 in Copenhagen, Denmark. This is my home countrymen that uh, made the game. Expedition Conquistador was the first game they made in 2013 and uh, Expedition Viking came in 2017 but now they are working with Larian Studios to produce Divinity Fallen Heroes. It is going to be so interesting to see what the, the new game for Divinity will bring but even more so interesting to see how logic artists actually work in their games which is why I'm starting this this game will probably have some elements in common with the Divinity Fallen Heroes game uh, and since we can't play that right now I thought it would be fitting to try out the game they actually made beforehand a key has been provided by logic artists for me to do this so Let's go in here and grab a new game. We're gonna set it to Ragnar Lodbrok. Hard. Ragnar Shaggy Breaches was a legendary Viking who raided and blackmailed France and England. If anyone's seen Vikings uh, TV series, you would know. He won power and wealth, but ultimately met a bloody death at the hand of his enemies. You will be met with great resistance, but your victory be will, will be all the sweeter for it. I'm not going to go Iron Man, so we can take um, and reload if, if need be. Uh, but we're going to play on hard. So this game is turn-based, just like Divinity Original Sin 2 is. Which The game, however, is also very, um, very much like Pathfinder Kingmaker, because it has that CRPG element in it. Um, but it has turn-based uh, instead of the usual CRPG live-action element that is in Pathfinder Kingmaker. So, what are we going to be called? We're going to be called Game Night here, just to make it into something uh, Vikingish. Uh, my father's name was Ishkil Bjarta Mor. Mortwinter, Eldjarn, Jorlunder, Agmundur, Jorger, Ebbe, Arnbjörn. <laughs> that uh, is going to be hard for some of you to to pronounce. Uh, it doesn't matter that much, but we're gonna. I, I was just interested to see how many names actually uh, are randomly generated here. A lot of them. Becker, Ulf. Ulfur. I like that. Wolf. Okay. That is a young, young me with blonde hair. Weird. Ah, oh, that's more like it. I mean, I am, I'm brownish and yeah, brown hair, brown eyes. Ah, uh, yeah, we can do that. Oh, that is actually good as well. Looks a bit older, looks a bit younger. I like him. Let's go with him. All right, and we can randomize stuff if we want to, but we're gonna go thin, medium, large. I I don't know why, but I always tend to end up with the large ones because I'm I'm like I'm more medium, uh, borderline thin, but <laughs> I always go with the the large characters, the large avatars, when I can. Scarred. No, I'm gonna try and make it a bit like that. Stubbles, shaven, scarred. Alright, he doesn't have any scars. Braided? It's not really... It's not really braided. It's just beard. Full beard. Not bushy. Oh, wow. Okay. Now that is manly. Really cool. Okay. Let's go with full. The hair, can't really see, but wavy seems fair. Might go with nothing like that. That. Uh, 
maybe? With the headband? Oh, this is good. Yeah, this is good. This seems almost like that. Fur lined tunic, simple leather. Fancy! I like the fur lined. I'm guessing this will change later on. Light sleeves, braces. Oh, cool. And shoes, wrappings, or sandals, boots. Let's go with go with uh, the boots. My colors. You all know what the color is gonna be. Yellow or gold and black. I don't know which is best here. I think. Oh, that changes my banner as well. Okay. Oh, so if I don't go that way, it's going to be hard to see. Uh, but we could go a bit of white as well. Yeah, let's go with that. Cool. Okay, character skills. So the strength determines base damage with axes and swords and affects physical resistance. Essential for warriors and will occasionally enable knockouts. Oh, nice. In dialogues. Endurance inter determines hit points. We want some of those. Block chance, damage reduction, and affects stamina. Nice. Finesse determines base damage with knives and spears. Critical chance with all weapons. Uh, important to ranged characters. Perception determines accuracy with ranged weapons. Oh, only with ranged weapons. We're not going to go ranged. I, ha I have set my mind on that. We're going to go uh, melee. Mental resistance and stamina. Sense is fundamental to witches, skulls and other support characters. Alright, not going to have a lot of sense. We just want to kill stuff. Let's go high up in that. Fairly high in that. Can we go? Oh, we can go 10. Alright. So 10. Max those out. And then finesse for the crit. Maybe three senses just to be on the... A bit safe side. <laughs> Description. Bjorn to Ulfur and Astrid. Astrid. Bjorn. Game night tier. That... Oh, born, sorry. Born to... <laughs> wow, you idiot. Uh, Ulfur and Astrid are in the year 769. With mysterious brown eyes and hair brown as the earth, you've grown to be a strong and tough man, but blind as a bat and slow of wit. That's fine, I guess. And then we have 50 skill points. We can spend weapon skills, we have offensive skills, uh, to give us abilities during combat. We have support skills to help allies, hinder enemies, and provide ta tactical advantages without direct damage. Utility skills are useful for keeping the party equipped, happy, and well-fed. Cool. Passive skills improve small things, but permanent boost to stats or give the extra edge under specific conditions. Alright, which weapons do we have? We have the axe, we have the bow, no. We have the Dane axe. Dane axe, what is the difference? Oh, wow. Okay, so this is a two handed melee axe with two hex reach, high damage, and medium critical. I quite like that. Okay. That could be where we're gonna go. Let me see. Upgrade, and then we get an ability. The Dane Axe rank one. Dane Axe base damage increased by 10. Reckless Strike deals 25% extra damage, but makes you unbalanced. I'll lose almost at the beginning at the next turn. Okay, so if we do have someone at the front line that can take all the damage, and I can stay at the back and just, you know, <laughs> do my Dane thing and chop people up. That would be nice. Thank you. Base damage increase. Base damage increase and pull. Oh, cool. Hooks the target's neck with the axe and pulls them into melee range. That is really awesome. 
and Swipe performs a wide art attack with no armor piercing damage. That no armor piercing with no armor pierce damage. Okay, that simultaneously hit the target and any character standing on either side of the target, but which cannot damage shields. Okay, I like it a lot though. Must spend 100 SP. Okay, so wow. Okay, so we gain a lot more SP as we carry on forth. Uh, knife, we got shield, we got slings. That is cool. Very high critical damage. So you could go, instead of uh, bow for range, you could go sling. That is really nice. Spear, a finesse one, strength for the sword, and unarmed. Very nice. Offensive skills. Anticipate opening. The next attack will always be a critical hit. Oh my goodness, yes, thank you so much. Look, the Danax and then and then using uh, that one, the Reckless Strike for 25% extra damage. Jeez, you're gonna kill everyone. Uh, charge makes a melee attack with plus 5 damage for every hex you move before attacking the target. That is so cool that it takes into account that moving actually increases the damage you do on on impact cripple ranged attack no dual wield i don't think you could yeah only knives and axes can be wielded in your offhand that would have been insane faint move to the other side of your target and make the target spend its attack of opportunity does that mean you ignore the attack of opportunity or does it mean that you just trigger it. I don't like that. Interrupt. Postpone a ranged attack. No, okay. Rebuke. A kick that moves the target one hex away. Pretty cool as we can actually hit two target two um, slots away. Two, two hexes, sorry. Stun. A melee attack that applies the status effect. Stunned. Unable to act. Cannot block. Even if the attack is blocked. I think, though, that it doesn't deal any damage. Like, if you take the hilt and punch people in the face, it costs 12. Throwing. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Unlock several abilities related to throwing things and people. You can throw a friendly or enemy character and then select a hex adjacent to your own position to throw them into. That is so cool. Oh, throwing axes. Throws a small axe at an enemy using perception for accuracy. No, no, thank you. Okay, what support skills? Benediction, yeah, so we don't have a lot of um, sense, so we can't really do a lot of that. Protect raises the damage reduction of any adjacent friendly target to match the user's damage reduction. So we have 10, that is governed by Strength? No. Ah, Endurance. Alright. I guess that is pretty cool. Taunt! Follows... Forces the target to move their full movement towards the user. Oh, great. Tactical move halves the user's movement, but allows them to move through at traps and attacks of opportunity. Oh, cool. Skills. Got some armor smithing. And... Artisan? Oh, this is so cool. Uh, constitution halves the deterioration, deterioration risk for infection. Adds a chance to give the party bonuses during camping. Adds the ability to craft weapons. Diplomacy? Security during camping for one shift? Tinker unlocks the ability to build new traps and throwables or consumables. Scouting grants a chance to discover resources on the campaign map when you camp. Repairing when spend less resources repairing damaged items and get back more when deconstructing. That could actually be good. Get 10% more resources back. I like that. I like being able to repair my own stuff. And we can deconstruct stuff that we don't need. Convert 
meat into rations. That's going to be important. Increase the chance of hunting. Success on the meat. And the meat brought back. Missing a T there. Bring back two to three meat during camping. Let me see if, if there's anything I want to get in the skills department first. Faint. I mean, the rebuke, I really like that. Really like that. The charge could be good as well. Thinking just get the, a lot of skills in first. I guess they have a cooldown as well. Oh! Oh, we changed? The description changed? You are known amongst your clansmen as a ferocious berserker. Always the first to charge into the fray. That is so cool. I like that. Oh, wait, wait. We have more passive skills. Adrenaline Junkie. Grants plus 30% melee damage when hit points are below 20%. That is a lot, though. Avenger grants 10% damage on enemies that have downed an ally. Grants 20% damage versus harried enemies. Wait. Uh, that one. I saw that one uh, applying harried. That's still a lot you need to invest. And it's using perception for accuracy. I don't think that would ever hit, but maybe some of the other characters we can get will be able to do that. I mean, that is 20% extra damage. That is quite a lot. Dodge halves the enemy crit chance. I mean, it's a good thing because we are pretty vulnerable without a shield. Let me get that and we can always change it. Plus 5% to the points rain wait oh if I take dodge it removes my berserker ability or berserker ability but my berserker trait there fencer flanking damage multiplier is reduced by 15% points against the character fortune favorite grants plus three percent points crit chance for all attacks so crit is five, I can get that up to eight already. Good patience. Receive a twix, extra 20% hit points for restore and revive. 10 hit points. We have 120. Lone Wolf grants 10% damage increase when eight or more hexes away from nearest friendly unit. Low profile halves the chance that enemies target the character. Ah. And that won't take away. Hmm. That's interesting. Granted plus 25% percent mental resistance at night, night owl. Night owl. Reduces the movement penalty of armor by one. Opportunist, attacks of opportunity will also apply the stunned. What? Are you kidding me? Attacks of opportunity will also apply the stunned status effect to the target. So if people try to move away from me, I can stun them? Jeez, yeah, okay. Point blank, nice. A lot of ranged traits here as well. I'm jumping over them right now, but we, we definitely want to get someone that is ranged focused. Powerful kick, oh that is upgrade to rebuke. Oh my god. I want them all. We'll get more. Uh, applies knockdown status effect on the target. Oh god, so you kick them back and then... And then they get knocked, back, knocked down as well. Move around the enemy without incurring attacks of opportunity as long as you don't disengage. That's gonna be nifty as well to get that flanking bonus. You need to be on opposite sides. Relentless grants 5% to get an extra, one extra action when using normal attacks. Sexist. Attacks against the opposite sex do plus 10% damage. Okay, that's a thing. 
I mean, that was probably a thing back then. Sneak attack, increased flanking damage multiplier by 10%. Interrupt attacks have a 100% hit chance. I don't know what that is. Stone fists unarmed. Strider plus one movement in combat. Thick skin increases physical resistance by plus 10%. Wow. And walk your shots. Okay. We have three points left. Huh. I mean, this could be really good if you're in, you know, that quite not so good place where you're gonna end up dying and then you'll deal 30% extra melee damage if you are that low. It's not, I'm gonna, not gonna aim for it. Like, always get as far down as pro possible. But yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. Yes, I am. Nice. Your father was a great warrior and a good husband, but he was not a strong chieftain to his clan. As he travels to join his brothers in the halls of Valhalla, you must take his place. Our clan is beset by petty squabbles. Some amongst our people would contest your claim to leadership, as they saw discord our neighbor's plot against us. Gather your most trusted clansmen. Together you will face dangers which none can predict. You will be challenged on your leadership, your resolve, your wisdom. Build a ship and take your housecarls across the sea. Power and strength for our clan must be sought outside the Norselands. If you show yourself to be bold, the gods will follow you into battle. Your legacy will live for a thousand years beyond your time. Our clan must prevail. Wow. That was pretty cool. I don't know about the wise part, though. Not with, with this character. But hey. Love, love, lovely shield turning with the loading. I love the accent as well. It's very nice. When your herdmen become incapacitated during combat, the longer they stay down, the higher risk of injuries. Aid me, Odin, in my effort to bind the struggles of a bygone time as glimmering light on glass. Lovely. It is the evening after your father's funeral. What is this? Strength? Oh, my stats. Oh, that is brilliant. When, you're, when you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It is not a common ritual this far south, but your mother Astrida, who hails from the land of the Geats, insisted on it. All the thanes of the neighboring clans have come to attend your feast in this honor, in his honor. Your father may not have been the most successful thane, but as a warrior he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filling into your father's, your long house. The thanes enter first, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the thanes before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this smooth tr a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. Rorik. Characters with golden nameplates have a dialogue for you. Click on them to talk to them. The icon over your chair is the quest marker. You can turn these off in the game settings for a more independent play experience. Thank you. Talking to the other Thanes is not mandatory, marked by the silver quest marker, which indicates optional objectives. If we want to move on, just take a seat by clicking on your chair. Now, I think we uh, we need to talk to these guys. Schooler. Schooler Skull Cleaver. Schooler Skull Cleaver is the Thane of Yelling, which borders your area. Yelling is a large territory, and Schooler is one of the most powerful Thanes in Jutland. Yelling has prospered under his rule. So Yelling is not that far from where I live in Jutland, so that is 
that is really cool. I, I really love the reference parts here for the Vikings in Denmark. Skula pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. His face shows an earnest sympathy. Game night, dear, my boy. So sorry about your father. If there's anything the people of Yelling can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. That is too kind of you, Thane Skula. Of course, we must all stand together against the Frankish threat. Skula leans towards you, rest resting his elbow on the table. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead your clan? Um, I personally, I'm, I'm most for defense, and then, and then go off. So we'll go uh, defense. You really are Ulfur's son, aren't you? Just take care not to lose touch of your people's needs in your eagerness to defend them. He lets out a deep sigh and leans back into his seat. I'm sure you know I fought with your father many years ago. We were very much of a similar inclination, he and I. That man had a real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mike my words, came an idea. Through bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. He came to me for advice before he mounted his last journey. On account to my ties to Kupang, I should have warned him better about what he's getting himself into. What does Kupang, Kau, Kaupang, have to do with it? Vikings out of Kaupang have been to the isle across the sea. I've heard many stories about it since I got often, since I often go to there to trade. Your father wanted to hear if the stories were true. Ah, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later, after a bit more mead. Schooler nods more to himself than you and turns his attention to the food on the table. Brilliant. I love the dialogue options. Really well written so far. Halfdener, the thane of the slightly larger of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn exp expression and nods heavily when you approach him. He looks like someone. F this this image here from uh, from Vikings, not a Viking, but one of the Englishmen. You guys probably know who. If you know, put it in the comments. Then, because uh, I can't remember what his name is. They, you know the. Um, guy. The guy. <laughs> Ulfur is in Valhall now, game night dear. There's no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved. Halfdanir. Uh, but while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You got your work out, cut out for you. Uh, I mean, I, what, what, what do you mean? Your father managed to make quite a few enemies in his time, most of them among his own clan. If you permit to me, me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention to the wishes and needs of his people. Surely you were not expecting your claim to leadership to go uncontested. Uh, I know here, I know many disagree with my appointment. It'll be a difficult transition. Well, shit. Ah, oh, shite. As long as I know you know trouble is brewing, you can take steps to prepare for it. Halfdanir empties his mug of mead in a single gulp, then slams the mug into the table and calls to a thrall for a refill. Okay. Rorik. Your elder brother, Rorik, always had a penchant? Penchant for music. He looks up and gives you a warm smile as you approach him. Good kvel, brother, Rorik grins. I mean, my honored thing. How do you feel? Why is the elder brother being left out? I don't... That I don't know. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be uh, the elder brother that would be the thing if the father died? Maybe not. I'm well, Rorik. I know our father is in Mulhall now. Love that it's with... Uh, that weird sign. Rorik smiles. He can barely hear you can barely hear his soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain he is. Odin, 
would have been a fool not to accept a warrior like him. Okay, so maybe it's because he's just not a warrior type. He's more of a bard thing. If anyone disrespects you, let me know about it. I'll make sure it doesn't happen twice. Everyone knows you're the better warrior and a strong-willed man than I. Nobody wants me as their thing. To tell you the truth, I think our clansmen are most relieved, as I am that you took the mantle. Okay, so they they made a choice that he was going to take it. I have to go to be a good host. I'll talk to you later. Your brother flashes you a cheeky grin. Just use the old signal if you want help to get out of a conversation with one of the other things. <laughs> Love it. Kettle. Busy entertaining your guests? He's... What? Are you kidding me? Oh, cool. Kettle is standing off to a side, holding a horn full of mead. The young hunter appears to be watching with a feast, uh, the feast with a faintly amused expression as he nods respectively when you come near. Not too busy to check on in on you. Uh, as busy as you'd expect. Why are you over here by yourself? Oh, I wish it was... Ah, oh, dang. I wish there were more of the voice acting in this one. Kettle winks conspiratorially, trying to decide who to pick a fight with. I want this feast to be memorable, and nobody tells the story of a feast without a fight. Jokes aside, have you seen Schooler's house calls over there in the corner? Hrdergara and Skaki. I've heard stories about them. Nefia seems to be expecting trouble too, so I've decided to go easy off the mead and keep an eye out. Ah, I appreciate it. He throws his ba head back slightly towards Aslifir. Speaking of which, keep an eye on the big log bag there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. Ah, Aslifir's family, he wouldn't attack me. Kettle raises an eyebrow. Sure, he wouldn't do anything underhanded, but it's basically tradition for your families to fight over who gets to sit in the big chair. But this is your feast. I'll watch Aslafir and his friends, and you should relax and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Let's talk to Aslafir. See what he has to say. Aslafir is a distant cousin. Leadership of the clan has moved between your side of the family and his for generations. He is known as a skilled warrior and a hard worker. Aslafir, Aslafir sits with his two closest friends. Our condolences on the passing of your father. At least he died the way he would have wanted. He will be feasting with the gods tonight. I love that! More! Oh good lord, we need more of that. He looks up when you approach his end of the table. Neither of his friends acknowledges your presence. His tone is respectful, but slightly cold. There's no need to pretense. You've never respected my father. I will not ask that you begin now. As life fear seems to consider it for a while and before replying, sorry. It's no secret I didn't agree with how Ulfur ri ruled our clan. Bearing this in mind, I don't see what gives you the right to succeed him. But this feast is in his honor, and I will not insult his memory here, nor will I challenge you to claim the leadership. Um, Alright, so so basically he, does, he doesn't say that, so yeah. Thank you for keeping these things separated. Aslafir simply nods once, then he returns his attention to his companion. So he does not like us. At all. Ragnilda the White. Ragnilda the White is the most influ if influential of your guests. As the vassal of King Sigurd Hingr, Hing Hingr. <laughs> he is the current, she is the current ruler of Denmark. She has come from the trade hub of Ribe to the south, Ribe, Ribe, where she resides as Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It was a beautiful ceremony, Game Night Dear. I extend my condolences for your loss on behalf of Ribe and the King. Thank you. I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the Isles across the sea. We've all heard the stories of the unprotected coasts and their treasures. 
But there is more danger than the rumors led on. The invitation. We are honored that you could make it. Oh, reputation. Oh man, this game. So far, there's a lot of things that remind me of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Also, it seems like we need to build up our uh, whole homestead. So, kingdom building? Yeah. Of course, your father's sword will be missed in our struggles against the Franks. Did you know Ulfur well? I knew him as a warrior. We fought together in, on the Bravelier, and he struck me as a shrewd tactician. When your king needs you, I hope that you will serve him as your father did. Ah, sure. Um, I'll serve. Jarl Ragnaldir nods once. I'm glad to hear it. Our king will not forget those who aid him in battle. If you will excuse me, I must do the rounds. Enjoy the feast. The old shield maiden smiles. She grace gracefully slides back down into her seat, whereupon she spears a large piece of chicken with her knife and dumps it on her plate. Hungry lady. Nafia. There you are. The feast seems to be off to a good start. Nafia is one of your oldest friends. Your families have always been close and you grew up in the village, together in the village. She just finished pouring your mother a mug of mead. Nice to see you out of your armor for once. Nafia snorts sarcastically. You've seen my sister in this dress before. Surely that's the same thing. She closes her eyes and rubs the bridge of her nose with her finger. Gods, she was so excited to see me like this. I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> okay, so she she's a she's definitely a shield maiden that is more of a fighter than a than a uh, lady. Uh, where is Euphoria? Euph Euphoria? A sardonic undertone creeps into Nephia's voice. My poor sister has a fever again. She's such a f such a frail constitution. It's all this. Hard, uh, cold weather is hard on her. Mother stayed at home to care for her. What do you think of our guests? She chuckles. Your fellow thanes are certainly a proud and graceful bunch, even though they plot to murder you and take your lands. That's certainly the sense I'm getting as well. She grimaces. Oh, I'm sure not all of them are actively planning to kill us. I have a weird feeling about Schooler, though. I doubt they call him Skull Cleaver for no reason. Halfdener plays the lovable bull old grump, but I know he's had his eyes on our harbor for years. Ragnilda, I'm not sure about. She probably has nothing to gain from destroying us, but she's little more like Sigurd's Herringe's uh, appendage, and who knows where he stands. Ah, let's talk later. Good luck, and watch your back. Okay, I'll, s I'll, go, I'll go sit down. Following the initial meet and greet, everyone toasts to your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table and the freshly brewed mead seems to flow endlessly. F uh, oh, oh, he, go he goes out, okay. You're listening to Nerfia's unusual complaints about her mother and when Kettle perks up and slips discreetly out of the longhouse. Outside, some piece of pottery crashes against the ground and men begin to shout. In short order, the, die, uh, the door flies open and the doorway is filled with Otta Ellingson's sword in hand. Outside, you see his brothers standing over the prone form of Kettle. Otta looks around the room with disgust. What a splendid feast for such a shit thing! Otta's gaze stop on you. He raises his sword to point at you accusingly. Game not here. Your family has had its chance to earn our respect and you wasted it we uh what come outside and defend your honor or we will burn this hole to the ground nafia jumps to her feet already holding her knife her voice seethes with disgust otter you miserable drunkard how dare you attack your thane's honor during his own feast your family will pay for this otter turned his back or has turned Otta has turned his back on you and is already walking back outside. All the other guests turn their gaze to you in anticipation. Your mother leans in to whisper in your ear. You have to handle this. 
if the other Thanes think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our family's honor. This will not stand. Nephia, were you with me? A shadow sets across Nephia's face. By the gods, is he going to make us kill him this time? Isn't he? He is going. Yeah, could be. All right, what do I have though? Nafia is following you. Me, I have mead. I can hit you with mead. Increase strength for two turns. All unequipped items in your possession show up here. Drag items to these slots to equip them. Specific items go into the specific shot slots. You can also double click an item to equip it. Each character can carry two sets of weapons and freely switch. Nice. Very good. All right, we'll check out the rest later. Ah, oh, there we go. Trophy Dane Axe. Grab that. Your shield. I mean, I'm just going to grab the items. All right, equip. Trophy Dane Axe. That is what we're going to do. Cool. Let's go outside. Meet these guys. I know this first episode is going to be a bit long, but then around... Oh, okay. I think it popped out there for a sec. While it's loading. There we go. Most of the guests follow you outside and form a half circle behind you. You're dimly aware of the other things muttering among themselves. Nafia runs over to Kettle to help him back on his feet. A streak of blood runs from his hair down his cheek. But it looks like he can still fight. Four against one. That is what the sons of Erlinger Torgeslunds consider a fair fight. Otto's brother Toste sneers and he sounds drunk. Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. If you crave a fight so much, there are proper ways to handle this. Otas shifts his weight restlessly as he re regards the Thanes assembled behind you. Too late for thick second thoughts. When Aslakfair is our Thane, he can be the judge, uh, judge the honor of what's happened here tonight. Aslakfair steps forward and draws his weapon. You've gone too far, Ota. There is no honor in this. I must take Game Night to his side here. For a moment, confusion mixes with fright in Otto's eyes, but he quickly composes himself. Fine, we'll kill you all. Then I'll be Thane. Okay. Ooh, combat. Combat is an important aspect of the game. Defeat does not necessarily mean game over. You'll usually be able to continue and the story may change in some cases. Oh, cool. During combat, blue and hexes appear under your allies and red hexes underneath enemies. You can select yourself by and your warrior called Herdman by clicking yourself, um, either by clicking on them directly or by clicking on their portrait. You can make a default attack against enemies by clicking on them when the cursor changes to a sword or an arrow. In addition to normal attacks, remember to use your character's abilities. When the conditions for an ability is not met, it will be grayed out. Okay, so, okay, cool. So charge is possible. Charge is definitely possible. So we could charge him. I oh, would love to have charged that guy, but he's behind cover. Let's just take care of Otar first. Oh my god. Now that is a hit. That is what I call a hit. Alright, what about you? During combat, characters can be ordered around in any order. For example, you could move a ranged character a few hexes towards your enemy, shoot and then move back again. Basic information about your herdmen and the enemies can be seen by hovering over them with your mouse. It will show how much damage they do, how much they will do, and how their hit points, their resistances, and so on. Nice. So she has... Oh, she can reach three targets away. Or... Oh, I thought he could reach two, actually. Okay, that's fine. Let's move her into cover there. 
A character just entered cover. Cover comes in either low or high, which is visualized by the shields hovering over the hexes. Yeah, okay, cool. Very neat. When it applies, cover blocks attacks completely. Oh, there's no partial cover when you're, you're either in cover or not. Cover protects you against ranged attacks from the direction of the space with cover. So he can't shoot her. Okay, cool. A character in low cover will automatically stand up to shoot over it, but will also be forced to stand up if an enemy stands next to them. High cover still works if the character is standing, but requires movement to shoot at the enemy on the other side. Really cool though. So I can't shoot him. I can't shoot him because he's in the way. He has rebuke, cribble. He has quick shot. Minus 30 accuracy though. Ranging shot. All enemies adjacent to the target get spotted. Okay. Let's just shoot him. Love the animation. Oh my god. God, so that sets harried. Any status effects applies to characters will show up above the hit points bar. Status effects can last anywhere from up to a few rounds to several in-game hours. Some are permanent. Fatigued is one of the more punishing. Status effects will last as long as the character is still tired. Resting during camping will get rid of it for the duration of the character's stamina. So make sure everyone gets their rest. To get more information about the status effects, you can click the info button and then click on the characters you want to know more about. Oh, the info button. Oh! Oh, wow, okay, thank you. That is really nice. You can see each of their skills, which weapons they have, how they feel towards you, the damage. And Harried, base damage reduction is zero. Oh wow, Harried is insane. And he can shoot again? Yeah, he can shoot. No, he can't. Oh, wait. No, okay. So that just uh, does, doesn't deal any damage. Okay. Uh, let's put you there. try and stun him yeah as I mentioned it the stun doesn't deal any damage that's fine right. and turn demoralize moving shooting ow okay you can resist the Harry oh my lord you can charge every every turn Let me try this. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, if I use an ability, I can't attack. Alright, fair. Fair enough. And she can stabby stabby. Good stuff. I thought it had two reach. Maybe I read that wrong. Let's actually try two shots. Ah, oh. one more. No. Oh, over there. Okay. Spot traps. But that's fine. He can do him in. I mean, you can. Okay. Just gonna demoralize. Fine. All right. Let's charge in. <laughs> 79 crit. Beautiful. I am, I'm loving that guy. Crit 51. Okay, I'm loving her. She should not be using knives. Oh, sword. Sword is cool, too. You fight well. Critical hit. Oh. An attack was just blocked. When this happens, instead of dealing damage to the target, their shield absorbs blow. The better the shield, the more melee damage it can absorb. Absorption is indicated by the blue bar above the yellow hit points bar. 
and ranged attacks cannot damage shields. When a shield's absorption reaches zero, it will no longer absorb any damage like a character's hit points. The shield is automatically restored at the end of combat. That is really, really good. Uh, and we can't charge all the way over there. But we can move. So now he flanks. Cool. You just flanked an enemy. This will give both characters a bonus to the damage they deal. Flanking is only applied when two characters is on the directly opposite side of the enemy. Flanking damage is calculated before damage reduction is subtracted but applied after. This makes flanking a very powerful very powerful against heavily armored enemies because you can hit, hit weak spots. That is really nice. Oh, you can brace as well. Holy cow. Yeah, one attack each. Let's put you there. Sniped! Victory! Very cool. Whenever you finish combat, you'll see this screen, which has a few vital pieces of information. If you get injured, combat result. Any item still equipped by your herdman. If you used any items during combat, it will be shown here. As you can see, here you'll see the items equipped by each character. Any items lost your ability during the fight will be indicated by a red arrow down. Good thing we can repair. Otto Erlingson lies on the frozen earth in a small pool of his own blood. His blank eyes gaze to the sky. The lifeless bodies of his brothers are scattered around the yard in front of your hall. It appears you've ended the line of Erlinger Torslingson. But your guest looks solemnly as the snow in front of your feast hall turns red with the, bl the blood of farmers. If anyone, any of them doubted your soul before, now they see what you're made of. Anyone who has a dispute with me can observe their customs, our customs and challenge me to a duel, but I will not be ambushed at my own feast. Ashlafir steps forward. He looks not the least bit, least bit tired from the fight. I supported you here tonight because Ottar and his brothers were out of line. It is not the way of our clan to kill each other in drunken brawls. Game Knight here, son of Ulfir, I challenge you to a duel in the position of Thane. What? An excited murmur <laughs> rises against among the guests. Kettle mutters in a voice too low for anyone to hear, other than you and Nerfia. Can you believe this beaker, Sumner? His, it is his right to issue a challenge. His timing could be better, though. I accept. He nods, apparently satisfied. We will meet on the Holmgen Island at noon on the morrow. May the gods favor you. Exploration. Click on the compass rose, open the area map, and show the layout of the area where, with points of interest and your current position. That we will do next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, remember to leave a like and hit that subscribe button because more will be coming. Finally, I'm getting some time. Finally, I'm getting some, some excess uh, energy to do this kind of thing again. I've, I've missed it. Streaming is nice, but recording is nice as well. I hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful game night.